Okay, so we know what tools you use on Windows. We know what the experience is like on Windows. Yeah. What about the Linux side? I know right now you're using KDE, but you have messed around with GNOME as well. Yeah. Um, so obviously right now I'm using KDE. I've messed around with GNOME. I've messed around with Cinnamon. Okay. XFCE. Mm -hmm. um, I've used Mate in the past. Um, and I've tried to use Qtile and Fluxbox. Okay. Um, Qtile and Fluxbox, literally impossible to use. Literally impossible, because they're X11 window managers, and you don't get a compositor by default, and there is no standalone compositor that I know of that can work with a Tyler or a standalone WM that lets you zoom into the screen. Maybe Pycom can do it with a plugin. Yeah, I don't think but... Pycom... I, will... I actually don't know. I've never heard of it. Um... But... Hmm. E even if it could, it's it's completely moot because I need my computer to be usable for me to set that up. And without the zoom yeah. feature, it's not usable, so I can't set it up. Right, you're not going to get so too far the, with the yeah. Uh, TTY. <laughs> yeah, um, especially when the NVIDIA drivers render the TTY at your monitor's native resolution, which for me is 4K. Ah. You're not gonna read that. <laughs> I think there's, there's probably like a config. I know there is a way to change it, but to change it, you also need to be able to see it, which is a yeah. problem. <laughs> yeah. Um. So obviously, using the TTY, no. Uh, using a standalone XORG window manager, no, mm -hmm. not possible. Um, Mate and XFCE, I think they have lightweight compositors built into them. I think. Um, Actually, I think Mate is still using Metacity. Mm -hmm. um, and then XFC has XFWM, which I think has a zoom feature. Uh, the problem is they're very limiting in what you can do with them. Mm -hmm. um, and so for those, I used to use Compiz. Um, and Compiz works. But Compiz is also Compiz. Right. <laughs> so it crashes a lot. It's yeah. very hard on your system. And it's compass. Um, and, and the way it handles multi-monitor zoom is very peculiar because um, it treats each monitor as its own workspace, which sounds good and on paper. Mm -hmm. But then moving between your monitors when you have them at inconsistent zoom levels is right. really shanky. So I stopped using that. Uh, Cinnamon and Gnome, I believe they both use Mutter. I could be wrong. Yes. I know Gnome does, but I don't know about Cinnamon. But either way... I believe it's a fork of Mutter. Well, e either way, for fork or not, it, it, they both have this really nasty bug zooming in in non-proportional mouse movement mode, mm -hmm. where when you first enable it, completely fine. If you have a single monitor, completely fine. If if your monitors are lined up perfectly with the default settings, completely fine. But if you have multiple monitors and any one of them you reconfigure, like you move it around, you log out, and it doesn't matter if you're an Xorg or Wayland, you log out, you log back in, and it'll work for like the first few seconds. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to move your mouse, zoom in, and everything will work. And then, I don't know what it does, but out of random, it just completely gives up. And it stops tracking the mouse. You cannot move your mouse. You cannot pan the zoom area. And if you zoom in and out, you will start writing garbage to your video memory. <laughs> and the system becomes literally unusable until you disable zoom. And the only way... To get around it is disable zoom, get someone with eyesight to go into the settings, mm -hmm. turn off or turn on proportional movement, mm -hmm. turn zoom back on, then turn it off. <laughs> and then it's fine until you log out again. Yeah, it would be nice if there was a uh, command line interface to just enable it so you can just hotkey it when it breaks. <laughs> there, there is, but. <laughs> Uh, th there is a settings that you can like mess Is there a G setting to do that specific thing yeah, though? Yeah, there is. Okay. There is. Okay. 
It just doesn't work if you do it from a script. Because <laughs> the script runs too fast. <laughs> okay. Right. I have tried that. <laughs> okay. And the only, the only reason that I know that it's chase settings is because Gnome, to this day, does not have the ability to set a hotkey for toggling color inversion. I had to write that myself. What? They have the E settings key for it. They uh -huh. have it in the deconf editor. It's just not in the UI. What? Why? Gnome. Is this? <laughs> and it's the it's the same thing. Uh, actually, I kind of lied there. It's not that. Uh, they just don't have a uh, a key bind that you can set uh. for color inversion. There is a toggle for it in the UI, so I'm mistaken there. Okay. What I was thinking of there was uh, focus tracking mm -hmm. and carrot tracking. Focus tracking is when you have an application that pops up and like a button goes into keyboard focus or a text box goes into focus. Mm -hmm. The zoom is supposed to like warp over to where that thing is. Right, right. Some people might like that. I hate it. Because any time there's a notification or something that pops up, it tries to grab focus and it zaps me away from right. whatever I'm doing. Yeah, I hate yeah, it. Okay. And then carrot tracking is where when you're typing, the zoom area follows the text cursor. And I also don't like that because whenever I'm typing, I don't. I I, I obviously want to be proofreading as I go, mm -hmm. but I need to keep the zoom area still, otherwise I lose focus and I have to like force my eyes to refocus. Right. And it's, right a mental nightmare for me. So I don't like having those. Gnome has them on by default. No user interface to turn them off. You can do it in Deconf Editor. Mm -hmm. You can do it with any settings in the command line. But they didn't bother to put toggles in the main accessibility settings. Mm -hmm. Gnome! <laughs> well, Gnome, at least, people describe it as a, a platform that really cares about like fixing accessibility problems, so hopefully someone like can address that. I I hope so. I, I've I, I've obviously tried to report the the really annoying bug where like the graphics card just starts spewing garbage into the VRAM sure, when you try to yeah. zoom into the screen. It never really went anywhere because what happened was I was on Ubuntu twenty two dot oh four, which was like GNOME forty three. Mm -hmm. And they took a look at my mutter version and went, this is too old. Go away. Do you and know I'm like, what do you want me to do? Do you know the problem? Because <laughs> I recreated it on ARM. Right. What? Okay. Oh, so it does occur yeah. on the new version then. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it still does to it to this day. And I don't want to test because I have a functioning system and I don't want to end up with a non-functioning system. Understandable. Yep. And then there's KDE. Yes. Which, uh... I owe you a hug, okay. first and foremost, because yesterday I made a video showing off this one subtle little bug in KDE, mm -hmm. where the zoom works perfectly, the exact way that I want it to, just the way that it figures out when I'm pushing against the edge of the screen mm -hmm. is a little bit buggy and does not account for multiple monitors that aren't aligned. Um... So I made a video demonstrating that. Now, in the video, I said that I don't know how to use Bugzilla. And I don't. And Bugzilla's a mess. Um, but I forgot to mention the fact that I actually reported that bug to KDE a long time ago. Um, and the thing is, I forgot that I did. Mm -hmm. Because when I submitted the bug, I didn't have any indication that the submit was actually successful. Yeah. Like, I didn't get an email or anything to tell me, hey, this actually went through. This isn't a you problem. This is just Bugzilla. <laughs> I don't like Bugzilla either. So, a couple months later, um, I forget about it because I'm back on Windows 11. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and a few days ago, uh, preparing for the podcast, I switch back to Linux because I want to be immersed in the current state of things and figure out if some of these bugs I've had in the past are fixed because I don't want to describe a bug that's happened in the past that has been actually fixed. Sure. Um, because that's not fair. Um, well, I, that I, as a developer, opinion. I know that's annoying. <laughs> um, 
But, um, I, the bug was still happening, and I'm like, oh my god, they still haven't fixed this. So I wanted to make that video, uh, because in the bug report, I didn't have any screenshots or any way of, like, actually showing what's going wrong, because mm -hmm. I couldn't take any at the time. If I try to take a screenshot of the bug in Spectacle, it just does not show up. It actually shows the area of the screen that I can't see. So I can't do that. And obviously, using a phone to take a screenshot... I, I, I don't like using my phone for anything other than, like, a phone. It's, it's very cool. difficult. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to get the picture off my phone and onto Bugzilla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I, I couldn't have recorded the video at the time because... Um, OBS was a lot more unstable for me back then, and the mistake was that I was using the Arch Linux package of it. I was not using the Flatpak. Flatpak works great now. It does, um, yeah. I keep telling yeah. people, stop using the Arch package. The Arch team does not know how to package it properly. Yeah, Flatpak works wonderfully. It has trouble finding my NVENC encoder, but I'm to be fixing fair, that that's problem OBS. by not using NVIDIA. I've had yeah. the same thing happen with my AMD encoder as well. That's not, an, That's just an OBS problem. But yeah, um, so obviously the bug report didn't have any visual, like, any visual description of this is what's happening. It just went by my text and how to reproduce it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I make that video, I send it to you, you watch it, which is, already means a lot to me, um, and then you post it on Mastodon, which I completely didn't expect. This is why I owe you a hug. And I... I wake up at like 6 a.m. this morning to an email from Bugzilla, of, and I sent you a picture of it. Uh, it was kind of truncated because it was my notifications, but oh, I, yeah, I had yeah, it yeah. going through the screen reader, and someone else reproduced the bug, mm -hmm. and, and the issue got reopened, and that's how I got reminded that I actually made that bug report in the first place. Right. And then I hop, hop on a Mastodon, and I find out everybody's, like, yelling at you for posting the video to Mastodon, but not no. making a bug report. Okay. to be fair, GNOME developers are yelling at me. 